Let's see. <coughs> oh, uh, Jamie, before we begin, uh, during our review of Death in Heaven, you referred to me as the Doctor, not the reviewer. I did? Uh, yes, yes, and I was just wondering why that was. Well, I guess it's because you remind me of the greatest man I ever knew, the Doctor. <laughs> well, that's quite a compliment, Jamie, thank you. Hi, Dr. Shaw. That man was wrist deep in fungus every day of his life, but never stopped hacking away at the various corns and blisters life threw at him. <clears throat> That's quite a compliment, Jamie. Thank you. Oh, hello, and welcome to You Know Who. This is our review of uh, <clears throat> Last Christmas. A loud crash wakes up Clara. She heads to the roof and finds Santa Claus, two elves, a crashed sleigh, and a sky full of reindeer. He tries to come up with some lame excuse, but... <laughs> Wiggle! Wiggle! Down here now! Alright, fine. Yes. Yes, it's me. Claire can't understand this. Santa proves his identity by opening up his list. He knows what she wanted as a child and that she stopped believing in him at age nine. She tells him she stopped believing in fairy tales when she grew up. It's then the TARDIS appears. She's further stunned by the Doctor's return after all this time. He gets her in the TARDIS and confronts Santa. I know what this is. I know what's happening, and I know what's at stake. I don't think you do, Doctor. The Doctor asks her if she believes in Santa. Right now? Yes. Yes, she does. In a base in the Arctic, a young woman named Shona is being monitored by her three teammates. They're opening the door to the infirmary. There are four sleepers in there, and whatever she does, she must not think about or look at the sleepers. They play music for her, and she starts dancing her way through the infirmary. Seemingly, it's all working. They're interrupted by the Doctor and Clara. The sleepers awake. The doctor can see that they're deaf and blind. That means they're telepathic. The sleepers hunt those who are thinking about them. As the sleepers begin to peel back, we see human features underneath. To distract Clara, the doctor tells her Danny Pink is probably flirting with her neighbors, and she slaps him, telling him Danny is dead. The other scientists show up and try to evacuate everyone. It's then that they're attacked by the headcrabs from Half-Life 2. An explosion is set off and a tangerine rolls in, followed by wind-up toys of all sorts. Santa rides in on Rudolph. This is the North Pole. Followed by his elves, Santa orders the sleepers back to bed. He brings in a specimen, dream crabs. An invasion of these and Earth is doomed. As Shona questions Santa, the lead scientist Ashley works with the Doctor and Clara. The telepathy of the dream crabs is powerful, so they can't trust anything they're seeing. Do you know what the big problem is in telling fantasy and reality apart? What? They're both ridiculous. Ashley goes to get him footage of the alien attack, but won't tell him why they're here at the North Pole. The Doctor and Clara admit they lied to each other. Danny is dead, and the Doctor never found Gallifrey. The Doctor finds Shona still questioning Santa. She's also very vague about why they're here. Beardy weirdy. Yeah. How'd you get all the presents in the sleigh? It's bigger on the inside. Oh. Along with the rest of the crew, Fiona and Albert, the Doctor's shown expedition footage of the other four team members being taken by the Dream Crabs. Albert then says what we're all thinking. They're a bit like facehuggers, aren't they? The horror movie, Alien. There's a horror movie called Alien. That's really offensive. No wonder everyone keeps invading you. Yes, yeah, strangely enough, there haven't been any alien invasions since the release of the film Prometheus. <laughs> I, I guess the aliens really like that one, eh, Jamie? Or, more likely, it showed them that Earth wasn't worth the trouble anymore. Oh, uh, well, I, I... I enjoyed it. The Doctor explains the hosts are kept happy and occupied in dreams as the crab devours the human brain. Claire goes to bring them the specimen Santa brought in, only to find it's missing. She can hear it coming in hives, just as the Doctor realizes that the group thinking about the dream crab has probably woken it up. Claire tries to distract herself. She remembers Danny and all her regrets just as the crab gets to her. She then wakes up in her bedroom at home. Danny is there and it's Christmas morning and she's getting everything she wanted, only to find a blackboard warning her she's dreaming. She finds herself surrounded by chalkboards warning her that she's dying, and she can even hear the doctor's voice before taking a moment and blocking them out. The doctor thinks about killing the creature to save Clara, but the scientists know that removing the dream crab will kill the host. The doctor then sends Santa back into the infirmary, and in Clara's world, there's a knocking on the door. She opens it to find the doctor, telling her this is not real. There was only one way to get to you. And what was that? I'm dying to. Of course, we all know that the only way to <coughs> get rid of a dream crab is through the use of Copious amounts of nightmare butter. <laughs> oh dear, I, I suppose that's a metaphor for something filthy. Oh, these writers of mine. She wants to remain here with Danny, but the doctor knows there's a pain in her head. It's where the dream crab is feeding on her brain. The doctor reminds her that Danny saved the world, but Danny corrects him. He died saving Clara. He confirms that he's a dream, 
and it's okay for her to miss him five minutes a day, but he wants her to spend the rest of that time living. This is their last Christmas together. They kiss, and the crabs fall off the doctor and Clara, turning to dust as they die. However, every one of them still has the dull pain in their head, and the doctor theorizes that they're all still dreaming. The crabs fell on them in the infirmary, and that's when they were saved by Santa Claus. He has them all read from their base manual. If they're dreaming, the words won't match. Sure enough, the words don't match. Santa explains, of course this is a dream. The dream crabs have them trapped, but their subconsciouses created Santa Claus and the elves to protect them. It's the North Pole. It's Christmas Day. And you're dying. Who are you going to call? Obligatory Ghostbusters reference. They hold hands and Santa disappears. The doctor realizes they're waking up and they must focus on the pain in their brain. They wake up, shedding their dream crabs, and get out in time to escape the sleepers. The doctor then excuses himself, quickly followed by Clara. She wants to get rid of the crabs, but the doctor thinks that since the others are now safe and the sleepers beyond saving, there's nothing left for him to do here. She then asks, if Santa wasn't real, why was he on her roof back in Earth? The doctor then realizes that there were only four manuals for a crew of eight and runs back in. He hands out the manuals and again asks the crew why they're at the North Pole. They all answer, it's a long story. Why did we come here? It's a long story. They do the test again, and it again proves they're still dreaming. The sleepers are wearing their clothes. The sleepers are the crew. It's still a dream. They're scattered across Earth, and in the Doctor's case, space, but the dream crabs have connected them in a single gestalt reality. The sleeper version of Albert reaches through a monitor and pulls him in, killing him. The Doctor's out of ideas. He doesn't know how to wake them up. Dozens of sleepers are now swarming them. They need to be rescued, and sure enough, Santa shows up, gets them in his sleigh, and takes off. The scientists begin to wake up as they remember their real lives. Fiona is first, a grandmother in a wheelchair. Then Ashley, shocked by a dead crab and finally shown in an apartment. She looks over her checklist and decides to forgive Dave. Oh, uh, well, wait, what's a Thrones marathon? Is that, <clears throat> is that some sort of uh, TV show? Oh, it's attitudes like that why I don't do stock raving anymore. The doctor wakes up on an alien world and heads back into his TARDIS. He arrives at Claire's house and removes her dream crab. However, it's been over 60 years since Clara last saw the doctor. She taught, she traveled, she loved. That was her life. The doctor is remorseful of having wasted their time together. He should have returned for her much sooner. So Santa Claus tells him to wake up. Sure enough, he wakes up again. He rushes back to Clara and saves her again, this time still finding a young version of his companion. They've gotten a second chance, and once again fly off into time and space. Well, there we have Last Christmas. Quite a conundrum of storytelling, don't you think? Oh, by the way, Jamie, I know it's a little late, but I got you a Christmas present. You did? Yes. It's a pair of wife fronts. You can wear them under your kilt. Every time you put your leg up on that camera harness, years fly off my life. Eh, don't pretend you didn't like it, you cheeky uh, monkey. Uh, uh, but all the unmitigated call! Uh, 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 oh, crumbs. Oh, crumbs. Uh, well, let's take a closer look at Last Christmas. Now, for the last time, there's a dress code here! The season finale gave us a sense of closure to the Doctor and Clara's relationship, albeit a tragic sense of closure. This is the episode that rights all the wrongs and sets them back on the right course, but whereas their breakup felt permanent and somehow right, this reunion is pretty weak. Given that they separated because of lies, I found myself wishing the revelation of those lies had been handled more dramatically. They realized the other one lied, but because they're trapped in a life or death situation, there's no time to digest that and realize how they feel. The story itself is just going around in circles. It's the traditional base under siege Doctor Who story with the twist. The base and the siege are all in their heads. Doctor Who is many things. It's not Inception. I found all the false endings beginning on my nerves by the end. It's a clever enough idea, but it's been done before by writers less constrained by time and budget than Mr. Moffat and the Who crew. The aliens were also unimpressive. I'll at least give Who credit for acknowledging that they aren't redesigning the wheel with their facehugger reference. Though I stand by my comparison of the Dream Crabs to the Head Crabs from Half-Life 2. I'm still not sure what would have happened if the Sleepers caught their doubles. Would they have popped onto their new bodies? Would the Dream reset? Would they die? There's a lot of logic here that just doesn't hold up under the light of day. But then, what dream does make sense when you pick it apart? The idea that Santa Claus appeared because of a subconscious cry for help on Christmas was clever enough. But again, the whole Christmas theme, which usually feels a lot more organic than this, is forced onto the story. Though I did like the constant bickering between the Doctor and Santa, two impossible men who can't quite believe in the other one. That was enjoyable enough, but frankly, Nick Frost felt a little too young for the role of Santa. Hey, I'm a huge Nick Frost fan, especially his work with Edgar Wright, but here, he just doesn't seem to gel with Doctor Who. He handles the comedy okay, but the more dramatic moments seem beyond him. They lack a certain amount of gravitas or presence. The elves were just annoying comedic relief, although I didn't realize that one of the elves was Dan Starkey, aka Strax. And as I mentioned, the budget seemed to work against this episode. Doesn't Santa normally have eight reindeer? Nine with Rudolph? 
The rest of the cast worked well enough, although sadly Fiona and Albert were a bit wasted. Uh, by the way, Albert is played by Michael Troughton, son of the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton. Shauna, played by Faye Marseille, was very funny and engaging, with enough sass that she actually reminded me of Sheridan Smith's Lucy Miller from the Eighth Doctor audios by Big Finish. I'd love to see this character return someday, maybe a future companion? And Ashley, played by Natalie Gamid, handled the heavy lifting of playing the base's leader well, balancing skepticism with scientific curiosity. And Danny Pink sets everything all right. Okay, fine. Rest in peace, boring Danny. I want to move on. As for Clara, her goodbye to Danny was one of two really excellent acting moments. And may I say that they've really improved their aging makeup compared to Matt Smith in Time of the Doctor. Although, if this were to have been her farewell episode, it would have been the perfect coda to her travels with the Doctor. One last Christmas between friends, but no, it's a fake out and everything's back to normal. With no lesson learned except let's have some fun. I have no real complaints with Peter Capaldi's performance. He's gotten a hang on handling the Doctor's anger, humor, and humanity. There's quite a nice moment when his inner kid shines through and he flies Santa's sleigh. Eh, Capaldi's fine. Not good, not bad, but fine, and really that sums up this whole episode. Well, I, I really wish I, I liked this episode more. Uh, usually the Doctor Who Christmas special is one of the best things about December 25th, but I <clears throat> suppose they can't all shine. I give Doctor Who, last Christmas, two Tardises out of five. Still... Can you imagine if my life was just a dream? Just a dream? Just a dream. Just a dream. Just a dream. Oh, 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 it's me. I'm back. I'm the last angry geek and I'm back. Mother, it was just a dream. Now, dear, this is the dream. You're still the reviewer. Oh, oh, uh, well, uh, I'm your host, the reviewer, and we'll see you next time on You Know Who. Hey everyone, nice set, huh? Well, it isn't mine. But it could be. Better sets, better equipment, more episodes. These things are all possible if you pledge at my Patreon page. What's in it for you? We could get early access to my shows, your name in the credits, even me reviewing the comic book or Doctor Who episode of your choice. Check out my Patreon page below. Exterminate! Exterminate!